hell does it mean to have insurance? Well, there's actual insurance, which is a policy where you and an insurer contract with one another in case things go south with usually your home, your car, or your body. So that's the layman's technical explanation, but more colloquially, or for our purposes today, insurance can mean just having a buffer or a backup plan or a thing you might do to make sure a big decision, like buying a home or having a child or just generally being a person, doesn't go to hell in a handbasket. For example, not spending your entire paycheck every month is a way of having insurance, a buffer, or a backup plan, if you can afford to do that. Building a savings account, or allocating a healthy chunk of your portfolio in cash and commodities in, for example, a time of inflation, war, and climate impacts is another. But so is eating healthy, getting vaccines, getting some cardio every day, doing strength work as you age to protect against bone density loss. All of these decisions are usually a result of understanding that just by being alive, you're really putting yourself out there. So while you believe in your choices and the odds of actual calamity are usually reasonable, the costs of calamity can be devastating. My friends, we are in a time of calamity. It's time to get some insurance. Let's talk about the world at large. Procuring insurance requires some sacrifice and long-term thinking. It's doing your future society or company or self a favor. It's something I talk to my 10-year-old about every single day. The insurance considerations on a societal level are not so different than ones for yourself. Three years into a pandemic we more or less mishandled, and decades into a climate crisis the instigators not only knew about, but predicted and then lied about, a society should, at the base level, insure itself against a devastating blow by building a baseline of readiness across all people, systems, and institutions. It helps to first establish a desired, clear societal outcome. For example, where everyone has clean air inside and outside, clean water, access to healthy, affordable food, affordable housing, annual comprehensive health checkups, access to affordable childcare, and paid leave, not only improves life for all people on a day-to-day -day level, but raises the odds that when, say, a pandemic strikes or a massive drought or rolling blackouts, that the citizenry and economy has a buffer or a cushion to fall back on. What it means is in a time of emergency, society bends, but does not break. Let's talk about what insurance means at work. A company's considerations are slightly different. Building a more inclusive workforce means your company is less likely to default to business practices, products, service, and algorithms that exclude the historically marginalized, or worse, just damage them further. That's a form of insurance. Providing your workforce with competitive wages, reasonable hours, family leave, paid leave, legit health insurance, work from home opportunities and funding, continuing education, meaningful stock options, and progressive retirement options that aren't exposed to, again, stranded fossil fuel assets, will make it more likely they'll not only stick around, but work hard for you. When shit hits the fan, and it will, it helps if your company's already resilient, not just able to ride the storm, but to meaningfully contribute to local or society-wide recovery efforts. Let's talk about what insurance means at home. If you own your home and you live there, it's considered your primary residence. So you're gonna need to insure it. I mean, you have to. Same with wherever you're renting, usually. So if you own your primary residence, it might not necessarily be a part of your investment portfolio, technically. But if, again, if you own it, it's an asset and, and probably your biggest. So it's a significant piece of your net worth calculation. But it's also your home. That's where you raise and shelter your family or play your video games by yourself, whatever. It's a major source of peace of mind. Understanding where your home is located and what it's exposed to should be a fundamental step in deciding whether or not to buy, rent, or sell it. There's a bit more you can do to understand your exposures. And there's more tools than ever for insurers too. I mean, every week there's more news. But understand it's early. It's very early. Policy hasn't quite caught up to the data yet and to the impacts. How early? 98% of Californians do not have flood insurance. Meanwhile, 32 trillion gallons of rain and snow fell on California since Christmas. Federal flood maps and land use guidelines have been updated since the 1970s. Insurers were disallowed from using catastrophic fire projections until recently when things have been catastrophic. Almost 5 billion in federal grants, disaster loans, and flood insurance payments have been provided to the state of Florida and households in Florida alone since Hurricane Ian. And last year, payouts from damages worldwide exceeded $120 billion. Who gets to measure these risks? Who gets to set the rates and who can afford them are questions our society doesn't usually deal very equitably in. So electing people to every level of office who actually live in these places, who understand these risks, and who seek to buttress our most exposed neighbors, usually again the most marginalized, is a key tenet of how we improve baselines on the daily and build resilience for the hardest days and nights. Forget the apps and the keto, and the sleep scores. Taking care of yourself on a day-to-day -day basis isn't that goddamn hard. If you're physically able, can afford the time and the money. 
If you can, eat mostly plants and very little sugar, stopping three hours before you go to bed, which should be seven to eight hours before you have to wake up. Get some cardio and strength training a few times a week. And as you walk, bike, or if it's available to you, take public transportation to work, call a dear friend. Definitely try not to sit all day. Take a walk after lunch, either through nature or again with a close friend. And do yourself a favor. Don't compare your success to hers. Ask instead, how can I help? Turn off most of your goddamn notifications. Lock your phone in a box when you're with your kids or other loved ones and dock it outside your bedroom at night, which should be cold and dark. Practice a little gratitude at night and meditate a little bit in the morning as you expose yourself to some actual sunlight. Warm up your body a little bit, have a big glass of water, and you're back at it. You will never, ever do all of those things in one day. You're never gonna do it right, but that's expected and that's okay. If you can do even some of it, some of the time, one, congratulations, and two, please use some of your spare time to fight for systems that'll help others do the same thing. As financial writer Morgan Housel wrote, money's greatest intrinsic value, and this can't be overstated, is its ability to give you control over your time. Insurance, real insurance purchased with money can also give you peace of mind. Health purchased with money and time can give you peace of mind. Compassion and action cost time, but compound like you wouldn't believe. All this is gonna require change. And yeah, Atomic Habits was great, and my Duolingo streak is hanging on by a thread, but understand those exist because humans don't like to change. It's fucking exhausting. So given the means, we wanna live where we wanna live. We wanna travel guilt-free. We want both fresh food all year on demand and to eat unhealthy food whenever the hell we feel like it. We want compound interest on our investments in whatever sector is printing money. We want a job that pays as well as the guy next door. But we have to change. And change means making some real sacrifices, especially if you're in the global top 10%, much less the 1%. Eliminating emissions, providing universal sick leave, and guaranteeing clean air inside and outside would get us a hell of a long way towards a less chaotic world. But those require commitments we've never really made before, despite the very clear incentives to do so. The same thing goes for regulating trucks, sugar, guns, and more. Again, when we know more than we've ever known. Incentives are usually everything, but truthfully, the self-awareness, the timing to say, we simply can't go on like this, to expose ourselves like this, will go a long, long way. Whether it's how we continue to allow for massive trucks and assault rifles, or how we hammer down a grande Diet Coke every morning just to feel alive, we have to stop. Voltaire said, history doesn't repeat itself. Man always does. Self-awareness is knowing how much we can and will actually change, and then ensuring against the rest, so the future is better than the past. Because remember, it's not about how many times you or I or all of us get knocked down. It's about getting back up again. And that's pretty goddamn hard without insurance.